Struggling to find a t-shirt that your arms fill? Or have you noticed that your stomach consistently extends out past your chest? Or does your upper body look more like a vertical rectangle rather than an upside down triangle? If you've answered yes to more than one of these questions, you're probably struggling with a skinny fat physique. So many people hit the gym and feel like they're doing everything right with their diet and workouts, but week after week and even month after month, they find that their arms, chest, back, and legs look almost exactly the same. And aside from the struggle with building muscle, even if you did lose some fat initially, you're now completely stuck with this stubborn lower belly fat that just doesn't want to go away. The good news is that this is actually a very common problem for many people, and as long as you follow the five steps that I'm about to outline in this video, you'll quickly start transforming your body from skinny fat to lean and muscular. Before we dive into the steps, you need to realize that this is a two-part solution. You need to lose fat and build muscle. Even though you can do these things simultaneously if you're an absolute beginner with weightlifting, in most cases, it would be much more beneficial to prioritize building muscle first. So step one is to focus your workouts on lifting heavier weights for all your compound lifts. This is a form of progressive overload that's pretty much guaranteed to lead to muscle growth. Do not focus your workouts on burning fat. As a reminder, your major compound lifts include barbell squats, bench presses, deadlifts, pull-ups, barbell rows, and overhead presses. So every week, you want to make it a point to increase the weight load that you're lifting for each of these exercises. You should definitely not be doing them all on the same day because lifting heavy is very draining. So you want to position your heaviest lifts that you're trying to improve towards the beginning of your workout. This is why I recommend that you should at least split your routine into two upper and two lower body heavy weight training sessions every week. Now, I know most people tell you to up the weight, but they don't tell you how. A simple but effective rule to quickly get stronger when first starting out is to aim for six to nine reps for all of these exercises. This means once you're strong enough to do a given weight load for nine reps, increase the weight load by the smallest increment you can, which will typically be five to 10 pounds. Once you do that, the number of reps you'll be able to complete with this new heavier weight load before failing will undoubtedly drop down. As long as you can still do a minimum of six reps, that's perfectly fine. You'll spend the next few weeks building back up to seven, then eight, then nine reps, and then up the weight again and repeat the process. It's a simple strategy, but I promise it works very effectively. So do this for all of your compound lifts. Now you can take this a step further once you've already gotten stronger and you start to hit strength plateaus with this basic six to nine rep up your weight strategy. So this other strategy incorporates a simple form of periodization. You would spend three weeks lifting the heaviest weight load you could within a high rep range like 10 to 12 reps, then three weeks doing a mid rep range like six reps, and finally three weeks sticking to a low rep range like three reps. Then you would repeat that cycle every nine weeks. And I guarantee you each time you go back to a previous rep range, you'll be able to lift a heavier weight load than you did before. This is because each rep range has unique benefits and challenges that carry over to the other. For example, the high rep range of 10 to 12 reps will improve muscular endurance. Meanwhile, doing three reps will help you increase maximal strength and power. The other great benefit of only spending three weeks per rep range is that if you get stuck at a strength plateau, you'll be moving on to a different rep range very soon where you'll likely be able to make some progress and carry those strength gains back to that rep range that you were originally stuck at when you come back to it. Next, you obviously need to make sure that you're eating enough of the right foods to fuel muscle growth. This is a huge, very common mistake where people say that they're eating a lot but they're not eating anywhere near the way that they should be eating to build muscle. And in this case, we wanna add lean muscle while minimizing fat gain. So you wanna set your daily calories no higher than 10% above maintenance levels. So for example, if you use a basic maintenance calorie calculator from the link in the description, and your maintenance levels come out to 2,500 calories a day, you would aim for 10% higher, which would be 2,750 calories. You don't want too big of a calorie surplus because that'll increase the chances that you gain more stubborn fat in the process of building that muscle. Out of those calories, you'll want to have about three quarters of a gram of protein for every pound of body weight. Now, as far as fats and carbs, first you want to make sure that you're getting at least 20 to 30 percent of your daily calories from dietary fat because that supports your hormone levels, including muscle building hormones like testosterone. The remaining calories can come from carbs because the glucose from those carbs will fuel your heavy weightlifting workouts. So let's do an example. If I'm aiming for 2,750 calories and I weigh 200 pounds, I'm going to have 150 grams of protein. I can then take the grams of protein and multiply it by four since there's four calories in each gram of protein. 
Then I would take 20% of 2,750 calories, which would be 550 calories from fat. And to get the gram amount, I would divide 550 by nine since there are nine calories in each gram of fat. Finally, the last step is to take 2,750 calories and subtract 550 calories for fat and another 600 calories for protein. And that'll leave me with 1,600 daily calories from carbs, which I would then divide by four since there's four calories in each gram of carbs. And now I would know exactly how much protein, carbs, and fats I should be eating every day to build muscle. Now, I know this might seem like a lot of carbs, but numerous studies show that allocating 40% or more of your daily calories to carbs maximizes strength, performance, and muscle growth. Now, step three is to make sure that you're actually hitting these targets, and you do that by tracking your calories through an app like MyFitnessPal for at least a week or longer. You wanna do this until you've fully mapped out all your typical meals and have a really good idea how many calories and the types of macros that you're taking in on a daily basis. You can't imagine how many clients have told me, Max, I eat a lot. Max, I eat all day long. I'm so full, I can't eat more. All I do is eat. And finally, when they agreed to track their calories, they realized that they were way off. Either they weren't taking enough protein or eating significantly less calories than they thought they were eating or some other issue. So verify by tracking. If you eat the same thing every day, you won't have to track as long compared to having a lot of variety and eating something new every day. But either way, you need to verify that you're hitting these targets. After at least 12 to 18 weeks following these first three steps, you can switch over to a primary goal of burning body fat for the next four to six weeks. The reason why we wanna dedicate a longer period of time to muscle growth is because it takes your body longer to add muscle nuclei, gain strength, and build muscle than to burn fat. You don't wanna lose everything you gain just because you didn't spend enough time building muscle. When switching to fat loss, you don't wanna to be too restrictive with your calories. This will help you maintain that muscle and strength that you worked so hard to build in that first phase. So only cut your calories by 10 to 20% from maintenance levels. That's roughly 250 to 600 calories per day. You will have to calculate your maintenance level calories and your macros again at this point because you won't weigh the same as you did 12 weeks ago. You should technically weigh more. During this four to six week period, you should still continue the same weightlifting schedule as before, except now that you're at an energy deficit, your goal is gonna to be to maintain as much strength as possible for each of your compound lifts rather than increase it. Obviously, if you can get stronger, then that's even more of a plus, but for the vast majority of people, as the weeks go by, you'll get slightly weaker and weaker. The best way to slow this decline is to continue with those rep ranges that I talked about earlier and continue pushing yourself to lift as heavy as you can. You should only be lowering the weight load when you can't meet the minimum of your rep range. So let's say you're sticking to the six to nine rep strategy. You start week one with a weight load you're doing for nine reps. Then the next week, you can only do that same weight for eight. That's fine. Even though you're tired from cutting calories, stick to that weight load until eventually as the weeks go by, you can only do five reps before failure. Since six reps is the bottom of that rep range, at that point, you would drop the weight down and repeat. It's kind of the reverse of what you were doing before, and your intention should be to fight for every last pound on the bar. Finally, step five is to add low intensity, non-exercise related activities like walking to burn some additional calories without negatively affecting the rest of your plan. This is very important. Avoid excessive cardio. If you do too much cardio while you're maintaining a small calorie surplus of just 10% above maintenance, you can definitely burn away that extra 10%. This is gonna make it very hard to build muscle. Meanwhile, during the phase where you're aiming for a calorie deficit so you can burn off the fat, performing excessive amounts of cardio can lead to faster strength and muscle losses. This is mostly because if you're doing too much moderate or high intensity cardio, it can suck up all the strength and energy you would have used for your weight training workouts. This could make it tougher to maintain your strength with those key compound lifts as you cut down. This is why I recommend low impact, low intensity, non-exercise related activities like walking. Even if you walk multiple miles every single day, it really shouldn't affect your performance during your weight training sessions, unlike doing lots of cardio. Again, it's very important for you to increase your strength, build more muscle, and maintain more muscle as you get rid of that body fat to escape the skinny fat vicious cycle. And don't underestimate walking. Just walking two miles every day can help you burn an extra thousand calories by the end of the week in a very sustainable way. That's because burning calories this way typically doesn't increase hunger the way that more intense forms of cardio do. And again, it doesn't interfere with your weight training. 
Now, if you actually follow through on these five steps, you should see a dramatic difference at the end. If you want to build more muscle and burn more fat afterwards, you would just repeat steps one through five all over again. Each time you do this five step cycle, you should see noticeable improvements in your body composition. This includes fat loss and muscle growth. So that about wraps it up. I really hope this video has helped you out. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And also, if you're looking to shortcut all the trial and error that typically comes with finding the right diet plan and the right workout plan, and instead you'd like a done for you plan that'll help you transform from skinny fat to lean and muscular, try my free six week shred. We'll personalize a meal plan for you based on your preferences. And you'll also get a 42 day workout plan and a coach to guide you through the entire process. To find out more about this free body transformation program, just click the link in the description below, or you can head straight on over to my website at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.